Okay, so the next session will be by Tim Potter about advancing container support in Debian. Thanks. Okay, thanks everyone. So I'm just going to talk today uh, about containers, uh, a little bit about what they are in case you haven't heard of them. I'd be surprised if anyone hadn't. Uh, kind of why, uh, some of the reasons why people like them and what we are doing in Debian to uh, try and let people use containers. So to start off, <coughs> containers are actually not really, I guess like everything under the sun, there's nothing new. Containers are a way of implementing uh, very lightweight virtualization. So instead of uh, having to emulate a complete server hardware down at the instruction set level, we're doing uh, virtualization at a much higher level at the, at the process level. So containers are sometimes referred to as process-based uh, virtualization. And pro uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Our containers are implemented using two feature uh, kind of technological features in the, in uh, the Linux kernel: control groups and uh, namespaces. So control groups are a way of uh, having more fine-grained access to resources on the machine. So you can uh, do a lot more in terms of restricting access to different CPUs or memory. You can, uh, oh, thanks very much. Uh, you can place limits on the network use and uh, I.O. usage of a, thing, so of a process or a group of processes. So it's, uh, it's all about uh, resource control. And namespaces uh, is Another feature in the Linux kernel, and it allows processes to be isolated from one another at the operating system level. And this isolation can occur at, seven, at several different levels. So at the process table level, so uh, processes can't see other groups of processes on the machine. They, it looks like they're the only process running on the machine. Uh, for network, you can give a process or a group of processes their own uh, networking IPv4 or IPv6 networking stack that's completely isolated from the rest of the machine. Uh, you can have a different mount namespace between uh, processes and uh, user. You can have a different set of user IDs, group IDs, uh, um, and uh, IPC and UTS, so inter-process communications, and uh, I believe that's kind of host name. UTS refers to host name and domain name types of things. So not only can you isolate uh, processes from one another using all these methods. You can also, I mean, you can also, you can have, you can, you can share them as well. So you can have two different sets of processes sharing uh, a network stack or it can be completely separate. So it's very, it's very fine grained as well, like control groups. And it's the combination of these two things, control groups and namespaces that make uh, containers work on Linux. Uh, brief history of players here. There's probably more uh, knowledge in the room here uh, about this um, than I have. But I'm trying to give a general overview. Uh, you might remember OpenVZ and Linux V server. These were quite old uh, in internet time, quite old uh, systems for doing process virtualization. So again, the idea is you've got one, uh, one uh, server and you can run multiple uh, kind of other containers, virtual private servers uh, inside this this one, one machine without you know, having to do the full hardware virtualization. So it was a kind of predated virtualization as we know it today. So OpenVZ, <laughs> uh, Linux V server, I think. OpenVZ is still going. Uh, they're still uh, producing releases, which is pretty, pretty fantastic to see. And our containers, I guess, as we know them today, kind of uh, came into being uh, mostly with LXC, LXC for Linux containers. Uh, they're uh, it takes the control groups and namespaces technologies that we that I mentioned, put some has some nice user space tools for managing them and creating and destroying containers. And then along came Docker. I think everyone here has probably heard of Docker. Uh, and Docker came along, and I guess it didn't really introduce anything new technologically. It's still underlying. The underlying bits and pieces are still the namespaces and control groups. But Docker came along with some really good user space tools. Uh, and this kind of idea of being able to share container images very easily. So there's a uh, image registry for Docker. You can say, you know, Docker pull Debian, and it'll suck down uh, Debian image, and you can get going uh, quite quickly. 
if you've ever used, uh, personally, I, when I use LXC, I found it a bit clunky to try and create <laughs> images and get started. But Docker, uh, I think their innovation, one of their innovations was this being able to get started very quickly and having a shared image repository. And uh, yeah, what's next? I don't know. Docker seems like it's uh, uh, invincible at the moment. They've got all the mind share and all the developer share, but um, you know, disruption, you know, a disruption in the industry has a way of happening and surprising people, so who knows what's going to come next. So it seems to me that everyone's gone container crazy. Uh, you can't kind of you know, read an IT uh, magazine or something without someone talking about Docker. It's really uh, quite amazing. And, uh, uh, it's even, uh, I found this uh, little graph here. <coughs> Uh, a while ago, I mean, this graph was I, uh, was originally done in 2015, and I reproduced it here, and it shows, I guess, oh, okay, it's not a not a scientifically accurate graph. It's just a measure of the Google Trends, which is the number of searches for a particular topic, and uh, the yellow line there is, sorry, the red line is so the yellow line is virtu searching for the virtualization. Red is kind of OpenStack. I mean, if you thought OpenStack was crazy, you know, just look at the blue line there. So. In 2015, the trend was you know, kind of going upwards, and then this year, it's continued to go upwards at, at about the same rate. So that's kind of, kind of interesting. I'd, uh, um, containers seem to be a bigger thing. Uh, I've got a question. Well, oh, sorry, this uh, microphone. Maybe, maybe people are searching for technologies they're having trouble with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's not very scientific. I mean, obviously, it's uh, well, that would mean they're using it, wouldn't it? But anyway, it's not very scientific, but uh, I think I thought it was interesting looking at the comparing the graph from 2015 and uh, extending it to 2016. The trends are kind of continuing, so it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so why has everyone gone container crazy? I don't know. I think I think Docker has just turned up at the right space, the right place at the right time, you know, with the right set of tools. And just kind of taken advantage of uh, um, perhaps people's, I don't know, disillusionment with uh, the complexity of OpenStack. I don't know. That's uh, just a guess. Uh, personally, I use containers, a Docker, a lot just just for day-to-day -day development, being able to create, uh, you know, a Debian image and then check some little thing about it. You know, is this file? Where does this file come from? Anything like that, you can just destroy it again. So where I would have used virtualization, it's a lot quicker to use a container. Um, and there's so many application images as well, not just the operating system. So you can create a Jenkins server uh, very quickly. Uh, it's, you can you know, make an Elasticsearch cluster very quickly as well. It doesn't take uh, anywhere near as amount of, time, amount of time as it takes to build one up using uh, virtual machines. So development, I think, absolutely fantastic. I use it all the time. Um, production, yeah, I've, I've heard some, I haven't had any direct experience with HP customers using, uh, using uh, production, but I've heard lots of stories that people are out there doing lots of CI, CD with containers uh, and using the isolation and uh, reproducibility features of Docker. <coughs> okay, so a little bit about containers. Uh, I think that Debian is actually missing out on the chance to get a lot of new users and to have a lot of uh, um, people use Debian that might not, uh, simply because we don't support containers very well at the moment. At the moment, I think Debian's a great choice for containers because of its uh, the you know the qualities that we like of freedom and quality and security, and uh, you know Debian. I've said Debian stable is stable, but what I mean is. Uh, it makes a great host operating system. So if you have, I mean, ideally you want your host operating system running on the bare, on bare metal to be really stable. Uh, it's got to have you know good kernel support, driver support, get security fixes. You know, and and it's, it turns out that it's a really you want to have stable on your host and then something on your else as your guest as an unstable. Sorry, you want to have something stable on your host and then your guest can do anything it likes and it's not going to uh, contaminate what's on the host. And having uh, having uh, helped run a build and run a kind of large public cloud, being able to separate your workload from your base operating system is a, just a, a really fantastic way of uh, uh, being able to 
to run things without, without a lot of trouble. But we can avoid uh, operating system vendor lock-in by you know, this host and guest thing. It's a, I mean, host and guest idea is something that virtualization has, uh, has, has taught us. Um, and yeah, we can, we can avoid running, having to run Red Hat on our, oh, sorry, we can avoid to have, having run other operating systems on our host. Uh, and if you want to, and I, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you want to run, run a, have everything free, you have to start from a free base. And so we, if running Debian as your base operating system for containers, I think it definitely helps. Uh, avoid OS vendor lock-in. I'm probably meant to say you're, uh, you should buy lots of HP hardware, so uh, you can have, have hardware lock-in. That's fine with me. Okay, so Debian support for Docker. Uh, yeah, the main problem here, well, not really a problem. For freedom, anyway, uh, Docker is available as a vendor package. Uh, from docker.com, and it's a binary deb file that you download and install. And you know, the security people might not be happy with that idea. What you know, what source code was it built from? Um, None of us is. Not only security people. Everyone. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean. Okay. So it's yeah. I mean, we don't want to download random binary images from the internet and install them <coughs> on a machine. I think that's a bad idea. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so vendor packages of the open source and the commercial Docker are available, but we'd like to have it in Debian main. And uh, this is something that uh, the package Go and the, the Docker team and I and I have been working on. Uh, yeah, we have fairly old versions in stable backports, 1.6, uh, 1.8.3 in testing, which is still pretty old, 1.8. Uh, and 1.11.2 just got uploaded a few days ago into Unstable, which is fantastic. Yeah, so, <coughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, we're kind of struggling with this problem of, uh, I guess, you can not being able to put new things into stable, so we can use backports. Uh, also, uh, the Docker, yeah, they seem, they, seem, the, they seem to be producing a lot of code in a very short time. Every couple of months, there's a new version, which uh, has more dependencies, which need packaging. So it's, uh, it's quite a large effort to keep up with uh, the sheer volume of coding that's going on, which is fantastic. It's great to see that... We're getting new features, and uh, um, the whole industry is kind of moving along. But yeah, making sure this is in Debian is is quite a bit of work. Uh, another bit of software you might have heard about is Kubernetes. It's a, a kind of container orchestration platform that uses Docker as a backend. Like I think you can use other backends, but I believe most people use use Docker. It's been going for a long time. Uh, and it's very popular as a, basically as a pass. So as a platform for developing, distributing uh, kind of large multi-node applications. And uh, this is in this is in Debian as well, uh, but only in experimental. So we've uh, uh, done a lot of packaging work, getting Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, interestingly, almost all of the container software uh, is written in the Go language. Uh, so there seems to be this uh, in this really interesting kind of uh, I wouldn't say it a renaissance, but uh, you know, there's really lots of lots of uh, interest in using Go as a language for writing system software. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, with Kubernetes is an, is an experimental, uh, hasn't really been tested that much yet. Uh, Rocket is not another interesting project. Uh, it's, I guess, in some sense, it's uh, some another group of people not wanting. To, I mean, trying to avoid. Vendor lock-in from Docker, so you know, writing a, not not a replacement for Docker, but a uh, a, a substitute or a complement for Docker. Uh, it's still very much in uh, an incub in incubation kind of development stage, uh, and I don't, I don't think it's seen a lot of. Oh, I don't think it's seen a lot of uh, a lot of uptake with all the mind share being taken by Docker. Anyway, if you're interested in Rocket, we have it in testing and unstable. Okay, just to to uh, to kind of close, why I think we should be working on containers. So the fact is that containerization is driving a lot of computing at the moment. We have a lot of uh, customer. A lot of our customers are very interested in using Docker in the development and in production. Uh, I've heard some um, stories from some of the salespeople in HP that uh, even very conservative customers like uh, banks. Uh, very interested in this. Uh, you would not think of 
banks typically as being customers that would be adopting a lot of new technology, but uh, they've taken on this Docker and Kubernetes idea and are really running hard with it. So Debian risks, I, th I believe Debian risks being left behind uh, or, and losing growth through other distributions because quite frankly we, are not, we don't support containers at the level that I, uh, that I think we should be. So just the Debian Packaging Go team is a typical Debian team, 55 members with a kind of core team that uh, uh, works on, on Docker. So yeah, I think I don't want this to be a, you know, we need assistance kind of pleading for help talk. But if you want to uh, try out Docker in uh, Debian, it's available uh, in the main archive. So yeah, download it and try it out, please. So thanks very much, everyone. And are there any questions? Docker and all the other containers with GCC Go instead of Golang, because the problem that we have with Golang is actually mm. that it's not supporting too many architectures. <laughs> okay, yeah, good question, yeah. Uh, I don't think that GCC Go is the preferred Go compiler uh, at the moment by people in the, doc in the Go community which is, I guess, is unfortunate because it's, uh, it's kind of what Debian has, I guess, packaged a lot. Um, but I've, um, so, it, yeah, it was actually quite difficult to bootstrap version 1. Point, yeah, we had, we had to bootstrap 1.5, I think, for ARM um, using GCC Go. But as far as I know, I think everything's being built with the new Go. So, yeah, sorry, which, which platforms are you interested in? Uh, Spark 64, for example. Okay, right. And another Ooh. problem was that... Uh, 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 another problem with uh, Golang was recently um, that Golang upstream, they, they kind of wanted to <clears throat> drop Power 5 support for uh -huh. PowerPC Big Endian, okay. which was kind of pointless because like no one was like, I mean, they wanted to raise the, the, the architecture level to, mm. the, uh, to Power 8, which mm -hmm. would have meant that, you know, that's the architecture that people can run the little Endian port on. So right. okay. no one would have been using Golang anymore in mm. PowerPC big engine. Mm -hmm. So, but luckily I was able to convince them to not to do that. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, I guess we're somewhat at the mercy of upstream in this, because uh, um, it's, uh, it's an entire language, I guess. Uh, um, there's not a lot of uh, deep knowledge of Go in, in Debian, I think, or at least some of the, my, myself included, some of the packaging team don't have such a deep knowledge of Go, so we're kind of following along with so uh, we're, what the upstream is. we're running doing. a bit out of time because we started late. Um, we have one more question here. Sure. Tim, are there any um, plans to make official? Uh, are there any plans on making official Debi Debian images uh, for Docker? Oh yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, there are already official images. Uh, the images that you can pull from the Docker Hub are built by uh, some Debian team members already. Sorry, some Debian developers already. So they're probably as official as you can get. Or you could go along to the cloud. Images buff, which I think is very shortly, and find yes, out. We had that discussion for various other cloud things too, and the Debian trademark team uh, wants some sort of verification of those images be because, uh, before they are officially declared official right. Debian okay, images. Right. Okay. Sure. I mean, yeah. As I said, the images are generated by other Debian developers, so you can uh, you can work directly with them. I'm, I'm not involved with that. So, sorry. Okay. We're running out of time. Thanks, the next everyone. session starts in five minutes. So please talk to Tim after the talk if you have any more questions. Yeah, sure. And um, sorry about the delay. Thank you.